TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom, good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. A deadly shooting attack claims the life of one IDF soldier as tensions continue to simmer. Despite mounting concerns over escalation between Lebanon and Israel, the U.S. continues to believe that a lasting maritime demarcation agreement is possible and within reach. Canada announces the blacklisting of the RGC as the Islamic Republic persists with a brutal crackdown in a desperate attempt to dim glimmers of the Iranian people's hope. Tensions continue to run high throughout the West Bank territories over the weekend, with deadly clashes reported in a number of locations, most notably in the northern Samaria region as well as in northern Jerusalem. As part of Operation Wavesbreaker, a joint IDF and ISA or Shin Bet operation concluded with the successful arrest of a relatively senior field operative of the Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad, who has been responsible for terrorist activities, including planning and carrying out shooting attacks toward IDF soldiers in the area of Jenin. It is important to know that during the reported operation, Dozens of Palestinians hurled improvised explosive devices and Molotov cocktails and opened fire at the IDF troops who responded with live fire. Consequently, three armed assailants were reportedly killed, while thankfully no injuries were reported among the IDF troops. Nevertheless, on Saturday night, a Palestinian terror cell drove into a security crossing which separates the northern Shafat neighborhood of Jerusalem and the West Bank, and upon entry into the crossing, one of the armed terrorists disembarked from the vehicle and opened fire toward the Israeli forces before fleeing the scene. The two injured Israelis were subsequently identified as a border security guard and IDF soldier. Regrettably, after fighting for her life, the IDF spokesperson's unit confirmed that Sergeant Noah Lazar succumbed to her wounds, a member of the IDF Military Police Erez Brigade, Sergeant Lazar was 18 years old in her passing. It is important to know that no Palestinian organization has yet to take formal responsibility for the deadly terror attack at the Shafat crossing. Nevertheless, senior officials of the Islamist Hamas and Iranian proxy Palestinian Islamic Jihad praised the deadly attack and pledged to never cease efforts to harm Israel. Meanwhile, IDF, ISA, or Shin Bet, and Border Police Special Operations Forces conducted counterterrorism activity overnight and during the day today, during which suspects reportedly opened fire from a moving vehicle toward IDF troops. The Israeli force immediately responded by opening fire toward the vehicle, and hits were identified. Thankfully, no injuries were reported among the Israeli forces. It is worth noting that overall seven terror suspects were apprehended over this weekend. Meanwhile, amid the heightened tensions in the West Bank districts of Judea and Samaria, the U.S. has called on both Israel and the Palestinians to refrain from unilateral steps that exacerbate tensions. We believe it's critical for uh, Israel and the Palestinian Authority to refrain from unilateral steps that exasperate tensions and undercut efforts that would advance a negotiated two-state solution. Uh, and, and so th that continues to be our belief. At a time of parallel heightened tensions related to ongoing U.S. mediated negotiations between Israel and Lebanon, on the demarcation of their maritime borders in the eastern Mediterranean Sea, the U.S. State Department remains convinced that a lasting agreement is possible and within reach, despite recent setbacks which significantly raised prospects for all-out war.
you know, special presidential coordinator Hochstein uh, is in touch with the parties and continues to work uh, to resolve uh, outstanding differences uh, as the negotiation, negotiation enters a, a final phase. Uh, we remain committed uh, to reaching a resolution and we firmly believe that a lasting agreement uh, is possible and is within reach. Meanwhile, amid nationwide protests throughout the Islamic Republic of Iran, the international community is becoming increasingly vocal, yet proactive support of the Iranian people remains limited. At least 185 Iranian citizens, including women and children, were killed and the revolutionary besiege forces have reportedly arrested thousands in a desperate attempt to dim glimmers of the population's hope. And while economic sanctions are seemingly accumulating against the Ayatollah regime in Tehran, including by the United States, the Biden administration remains open to negotiate with the Islamic Republic on its nuclear program, so long as the Ayatollah regime drops its demands to close the IAEA investigations into nuclear particles that were uncovered in undeclared locations in Iran, among other non-nuclear demands. Meanwhile, Canada announced its decision to list the Islamic Revolutionary Guards Corps as a terrorist organization after the government of Prime Minister Justin Trudeau experienced mounting domestic criticism over prolonged inaction. The Iranian regime is a state sponsor of terrorism. It is repressive, theocratic, and misogynist. The IRGC leadership are terrorists. The IRGC is a terrorist organization. Today, by listing the IRGC under IRPA, and indeed by listing the broader leadership of the Iranian regime, we are formally recognizing that fact and acting accordingly. More than 10,000 senior members of this terrorist organization will be banned from ever setting foot in Canada. Anyone on this list will be sanctioned and prohibited from doing business or hiding their assets here. We will strengthen our crackdown on Iranian money laundering in Canada. We will not tolerate financial transactions with Iran that are associated with the IRGC and its proxies. The Deputy Prime Minister continued by proclaiming that Canada will not be a safe haven for the IRGC and pledged to stand with all Iranian Canadians who are demanding justice for their oppressed families in Iran. Meanwhile in Ukraine, Russia is reportedly increasing its use of Iranian-made suicide drones in precision-guided attacks against infrastructure in Kyiv and elsewhere. Ранок важкий, маємо справу з терористами, десятки ракет, іранські шахіди. У них дві мішені, енергооб'єкти по всій нашій державі. Київщина і Хмельниччина, Львів і Дніпро, Вінниця, Франківщина, Запоріжжя, Сумщина, Харківщина, Житомирщина, Кіровоградщина, Південь держави. Well, the Islamic Republic of Iran is evidently broadening its destabilizing activities by sales of drones to Russia for use in the war against Ukraine. Limited European action on this matter seemingly frustrates the Kyiv leadership, which conveyed its dismay in President Volodymyr Zelensky's address to European leaders who gathered in Prague for an informal meeting on Thursday last week. Today, Russia has given a strong attack on the air in Ukraine's cities. Again, she has used Iranian pilots. Every day, they use them. It is worth noting that during the meeting in Prague, which alongside leaders of EU member states included also the heads of state of both the United Kingdom and Turkey, President Recep Tayyip Erdogan seized the opportunity to highlight Ankara's refusal to accept Sweden's NATO membership. Örgütlerinin yürüyüşleri devam ettiği sürece parlamentoda bu teröristler yer aldığı sürece bizim İsveç'e bakışımız olumlu olmayacaktır. While casting doubt over Sweden's succession to NATO, President Erdogan also seized the opportunity to threaten Turkey's western neighbor and NATO ally Greece 
warning that mobilization of troops on demilitarized islands could draw a Turkish response. Bu sadece Yunanistan için geçerli değil. Bizi rahatsız eden, bize saldıran hangi ülke olursa olsun onlara karşı bizim cevabımız bir gece ansızın gelebiliriz. Bunu böyle bilmeleri lazım, böyle anlamaları lazım. Şu an itibariyle siz anladığınıza göre herhalde onlar da anlamıştır. President Erdogan, who previously announced his refusal to talk with Greek Prime Minister Kyriakos Mitsotakis, reiterated that at this moment in time, diplomatic engagement between Ankara and Athens is not feasible. Responding to the Turkish leader, Greece warned that it is ready to use all of its diplomatic and military might to defend its sovereignty against Turkey. Thank you for watching TV7 Israel News. I would like to start by thanking our TV7 family of supporters for standing by TV7's productions here in Jerusalem. TV7 Israel is a donation-based ministry, and therefore if you're blessed by our productions, please consider making a financial contribution that in turn will enable us to sustain our ongoing operations. Additionally, I would like to encourage you, pray for our persecuted brothers and sisters worldwide, for the peace of Jerusalem and salvation of Israel. I'm Jonathan Hassan wishing you a Chag Sameach and we will see you again tomorrow at the same time.